Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the L1 show. My name is Krista, and, and we're level one tech. Oh, are you going to introduce yourself? Someone, someone? <laughs> someone in the forum posted last week and was like, I'm still... Who I'm are new you here. people? Yeah, he was like, I'm new here. I enjoy the show, but I've never caught everybody's name. And I was like, that just reinforces that we should introduce ourselves at the start of the show. I'm Krista. I'm Beauregard. His name is Ryan. And we're talking about government and sadly, not a lot of government news again this week. I have a theory. I think it's because the politicians spend so much time on their sun rocks during the summer. Mm -hmm. They're probably like, 4th of July is in like two weeks. We really just can't get anything done with the yeah. holiday looming. It's a lizard person joke. Uh. That's the way to explain it. Uh. But we do have a little bit of stories. And this one we kind of already knew about. But it's nice to see that uh, the normies and the people in charge, maybe. I mean, they already knew, too. But now they know that we know. <laughs> Another level one confirmed. Uh, U.S. intelligence confirms it buys Americans' personal data. Newly declassified report says controversial practice raises significant issues for American civil liberties. Yeah, we don't have any. And they're being eroded every day. Now Does we, this surprise anybody? Was anybody like, oh, I can't believe this actually happened? Well, the scope's a little higher because uh -huh. we knew about the IRS doing it. We knew about ICE doing it. Now we know that pretty much all the agencies do it. <laughs> Have we gotten to the point where they're using civil asset forfeiture and data that they buy from Venmo and Cash App to find people that are carrying around large amounts of cash? I think we have. That would certainly be a profitable query, wouldn't it? <laughs> so uh, the usual uh, Ron Wyden... He's all over all of this stuff. He's against it. He's trying to get some stuff done about it. I'm not sure if he's going to be able to do that. Ron Wyden's the only person that seems to recognize that this kind of thing will ultimately lead to corruption. He's found his niche. You know, I've been uh, I've been kind of binging some pharma, like, you know, whistleblower type literature. Man, My man Ron Wyden was back in 2005. <laughs> he was still fighting this fight. So... Well, I mean, it's not hard to look around Eastern Kentucky and look at what, you know, the Sacklers have done to that and think, wait a minute, why is justice not happening? And then you d dig into it and you find stuff and it's just like, oh. Because it happened to poor people and they don't care about poor people. Well, but that that was flawless. by design from the beginning. The lawsuit exposed uh, that. They were like, where can we go? That these hill people. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> Pikeville. Pikeville's uh, the perfect place. Well, I think the problem is that Ron Wyden is a bit of a, uh, an exception to the rule. And they're always able to line some pockets and nudge things just enough to make it so that it's not in our favor. And that brings us to Massachusetts. Ars Technica's headline is feds tell automakers not to comply with the Massachusetts right to repair law because uh, the automakers have cast a confusion spell on <laughs> New York and uh, not New York, but uh, DC lawmakers. And it was super effective. Yeah. Is they, that a confusion spell or just throwing <clears throat> gold at them? Uh, now they say because there's a fed law that conflicts with the state law, you follow the fed law. What about that 10th amendment? <laughs> Doesn't that really just lay it out that that's not how that's supposed to work? But uh, this has to do with the telematics. We've been talking about that for a lot. These car companies really don't want you to see the telematics. I really... You know, we're we're technical people. Can can the car companies explain it to us in simple terms? I mean, the article says that if we open up telematics, your car mechanic could remotely control your braking system and cause you to stop. Are you saying that the car company can do that? Because that's Absolutely. what it sounds like. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, why did we why why did we build that infernal machine? What's the meme? Which is like with the the machine killing the scientist that created it, and it's just like, why did I do this? Actually, we got a nonsense story coming up where the they made, the car thief made the classic mistake of not getting a Hyundai or a Kia. They got a late model Buick and there wasn't a need for a car chase. OnStar <laughs> was just like, nope. <laughs> and uh, we got some artificial intelligence stuff, but not in the AI section because the government section was so anemic. I said, you know what? It's If Congress is doing it, let's throw it in there. <laughs> and uh, we probably need some protections, but much like that right to repair law, I don't have a lot of hope for these. You asked Congress to consider two new bills on artificial intelligence. And I was really hoping, based on the headline, this would be a story about how the government is recognizing that subjecting the citizens to a Kafka-esque hellscape where they have to navigate some sort of AI menu to get something done, should be illegal, but that's not what this is about at all. Reuters still getting mileage out of these silver Barbie picks. Yeah. Artificial intelligence. 
Uh, one of them was uh, Article 230 does not apply to artificially created content. So if there's something posted on Facebook that's made by AI, it doesn't get the protection of Article 230 somehow. The, I don't remember the other one. What was the other one? It's so inconsequential that it doesn't matter. It was, uh, uh, yeah, it, it wasn't groundbreaking, but it is probably something that we do need to worry about in terms of AI. It was uh, it, like it, it mostly around a data breach. Like if an AI causes your, you know, credit card to be lost. Oh, was it, it had to be identify the content, right? Yeah. I think maybe, yeah. So you can't fake AI content and call it your own. You need to say that it is AI content, which seems like a good rule for reasons we'll talk about in the AI section. Or if you just think about for three seconds, you'd realize that's probably a good idea. Oh, and we have more information about 231. Yeah, uh, this is a, an article about entirely the first look of the bipartisan bill that's denying 230 protections for AI generated content. It's a good picture. Also, Dark Day, Axios, who I love because their articles are so succinct. They just yeah. give you the bullet points and cut all the BS. They're going paywall. And shitification. <laughs> so, <sighs> the whole internet. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm getting kind of tired of this fight. You know, this is kind of like Google Oracle at this point. It was supposed to close today. Oh, so like the this, day that we're shooting this, it was we, supposed to close today. Can we just wrap this up one way or the other? <laughs> uh, U.S. judge temporarily blocks Microsoft acquisition of Act Activision. No! It's because Microsoft and Activision were moving so fast. The FTC moved to block them to say, wait, we got to look at this some more. You're moving too fast. But the quotes from Microsoft and Activision were like, yes, we support this. We need to hammer this out now and not worried about it later. I don't know if they were just saying what they thought the government wanted to hear or no, it's, actually think that. it's part of their strategy because they think that they're going to do anti-competitive things later. This is how this has played out in the past. They do horrible things later. And then the government says, we didn't get a chance to rule on that. You move too quickly. So now by having this in the future, when they do something really hideous, like lay off half the people or close the game studio or reduce competition or whatever, they can look back and say, no, look, the court evaluated it. And at the time it was fine. Of course, they still don't have their, European go ahead. They do have Australia. They have like two thirds of the European go ahead. So it feels like it's going to happen. Yeah. And uh, another thing that's probably going to happen is that TikTok is going to see keep sending data to China because as much as they like to deny that, it seems like it's still going on and we still want to stop it. Senators reintroduced bipartisan bill that blocks TikTok from exporting data to China. It doesn't matter what the law says because the guy that was from the U.S. Uh, incorporation of TikTok, when he went before Congress, he was way smarter than anybody asking him questions. And it's not going to matter. It's like, oh, we don't send any data to, to our Chinese subsidiary. That's crazy. Oh, we do offsite backups to China, but that's different. <laughs> what? Wait a minute. Does it? I guess it doesn't count as exfiltrating when China just uses their god account that we learned about yeah. they can see everything from the back end <laughs> <laughs> and patents we you know like i mentioned earlier the uh, google oracle and all the the horrible patent fights that we've had sonos they're in there constantly with their little patents trying to get everything they can out of it and it's a bad situation we should be reforming it but we shouldn't be reforming it in this direction <laughs> U.S. Patent, uh, proposes, uh, patent Office proposes a rule to make it much harder to kill bad patents. This article talks about how the EFF used it to kill the uh, audio podcasting patent. How can you, like, that's not even, you wouldn't think that would be patentable. And yet, it is patented. But it was shot down. And this would make it harder to do that. This also would establish a weird class of people filing for patents. So, like, an individual's patent would not be subject to this process. But Google's patents like this would which seems weird so a company will have the tiny little startup patent then they will buy that startup mm -hmm. then it'll have been put in by a tiny little startup or an individual but they'll have gotten it as part of the sale it's that, that doesn't seem a lot different than what's going on with the patent troll and venue shopping that we already have well it's a little worse yeah <laughs> it's chipping away yeah, further. <laughs> they hit the bottom and then they started digging <laughs> And uh, our war with China, our trade war with China, at least, is still hot. 
And we had a pretty firm stance there. We went to the rest of the world and was like, we're not doing business with China and neither are you. <laughs> and a lot of people were like, yeah, maybe we'll do that. But secretly, they all knew that that would destroy their economies as it will probably destroy ours. So now there's pushback. U.S. has softened its stance on South Korea and Taiwanese chip makers in China. So if you're a Taiwanese company or a South Korean company and you depend on China for some part of your supply chain, uh, things are a little easier now. I didn't, they didn't come out and say this. Also, uh, did you guys notice that who this, who wrote this story? No, it's so small. The Bazinga news bot wrote it. Wow. Oh, so the wall street journal story was summarized by an AI. This is a surprisingly good story. And, uh, if you continue reading, which is a stupid button, here he is. Here's the Bazinga <laughs> news bot. He wrote the story. He never will write anything terrible on Twitter to get him canceled. So. Good, good bot. My brain just instinctively filtered that out because it thought it was a banner ad. Also, yeah, it's kind of designed like a banner. Probably why they do that, right? Uh. But I think what happened here is we went to all these countries and they're like, you will not trade with China. And they were like, uh, yes, we will, bro. And we're like, we've changed. We've softened. You know, rather than be embarrassed to be told no. I mean, some of the people at TSMC kind of explained it in in a way that I understood to be, you know, we're we're designing really advanced plumbing. We need plumbing fittings. And yeah, China is going to really know how to make a, a combination Y and a, and, a, and a sanitary T and blah, blah, blah. But they're not going to be able to assemble that into anything useful. And honestly, if they get better at making those components, then that would be better for the world. And so that, that argument kind of makes sense. It doesn't really matter that China is making those components. Although if no one else is, that's a bit of a problem. But yeah, because we will need those components too. Yeah. And then we'll go to war. Yeah. And only China will have those components. Yeah. There's no reason we couldn't be making those here because, again, it's like the bog standard Lego building blocks of modern infrastructure. There's everybody should be making those. If somebody wants to make those cheaper, that's fine. But let's not let that turn into arcane knowledge. But it costs money to pay people to make those. And you can get them so cheap. And, and nobody's going to buy yours if you make them here because they're going to be 10 times more expensive. Well, they might not have a choice if the Cold War turns hot. Are you saying that there's <laughs> dangers to globalism? <laughs> and Comcast, uh, in the past, I remember Comcast insisting that their fees were not that confusing right? yeah remember when they were called out they're on that like, stick, if you will. <laughs> like our fees aren't you know we've only got like 99 different plans it's easy to navigate but now they're saying the opposite comcast complains to the fcc that listing all of its monthly fees is too hard oh you don't have an accounting department who keeps track of that shit that's like asking somebody who makes and sells food it's just too hard to list all these ingredients it's got some corn in it don't worry about it so you got these here, broadband facts, the nutrition label that's supposed to go on everything. And uh, they're basically saying, uh, yeah, there's no way we can fit all of our extra fees in that tiny space. <laughs> now, there is no rule saying that they have to charge those fees as itemized things. Like they could just roll that into the price. Yeah. That's actually probably what you should do. But they want to make you think that this is the government charging you money and not the government charging Comcast money. Mm. But in reality, it's just Comcast making crap up. That's, uh, you know, again, I've been binging the, the pharma whistleblower books. They did the exact same thing with side effects. Mm. They're like, oh, there's no way we can't fit all the side effects on these tiny little labels. We'll just put a web address on there. Because everybody's going to go and check that. Well, it's funny when you go home and you watch cable with your parents and there's ads for medications and then they like whisper the whole like line of uh, things really Which, fast. In the 90s, they had to list every side effect. Mm. And thanks to Mr. Bob Dole, now they only have to list like the most severe. I think that was Bob Dole. It was either Bob Dole or Orrin Hatch. Those two really screwed us when it came to the to Big Pharma. And, uh, you know, we, we had the... Uh, the adult material ban, and then we had the TikTok ban, and now we have a new ban that's catching on among conservative states. Texas bans kids from social media without parental consent. <laughs> do, do parents have to like sign a form? Like, how do you enforce that? I mean, this seems great. Google can just say, "Hey, well, kids aren't allowed to use it," or Twitter or whoever. But I think they expect the site to somehow enforce that. Uh, that's gonna be hard. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's a, are you over 13? Do you have yes. your parents' commission or permission? 
That's like when they do like a permission slip in school and like you forget to get it signed and you just forge your parents' signature. Not that I ever did that, but. <laughs> that would have been rough on your parents if you'd gotten killed on that trip. Mm. Well, you know who's at risk of getting killed every day? Delivery workers in New York City. And they used to do that for not very much money and they just hope for tips. But now perhaps they'll get a bit more. New York City establishes the first minimum wage for food delivery workers. This doesn't seem unreasonable, given that they already had a minimum wage that is comparable to this for, you know, gig delivery workers. Uh, what was it like? Seventeen ninety six per hour, yeah. and then nineteen ninety six per hour in twenty twenty five. Although this says nineteen ninety six hourly. Oh, that's the uh, regular food delivery drivers, not the gig worker ones. Gig worker ones. Still yeah, you the- seventeen was higher up in the article. Mm. Oh, that's 19 by 2025. Yeah. With the rate of inflation. Uh, <laughs> I don't think it's well, going to in New up. York, it's so expensive. They're like, here, that's pretty good money. But in New York, that's probably nothing. And uh, air tags. And now we've learned that Google rolled out their version, which has a much wider network. So it's probably going to be much better for tracking. It's a problem. And people are getting stalked and killed. So our glorious leaders have stepped in. Ohio Senate moves to criminalize secretly tracking people with air tags and similar apps and devices. There was some carve outs here. Obviously, law enforcement, they can do whatever uh, they want. Uh, non private investigator. What do you think that is? <laughs> a rando? Is that a corporate? <laughs> Probably. Is that just like some creep who like looks people up on the internet? Are you referring to yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, there was one other exception, but it was another weird one. Oh, okay. Here, uh, parents or guardians tracking their children. I guess that's okay. Law enforcement, caregivers tracking the elderly or disabled, and non-private investigator working on behalf of a legitimate business purpose. That is corporate. Uh, yeah. Wow. Interesting. So Amazon can keep your your watch on you. And they can keep doing that corporate espionage that they love so much. And moving on to Europe, they are also going to regulate AI. Europe moves ahead on AI regulation challenging text giant's power. This is also, you have to label it. And uh, there was was one other big prong to this one. Do you remember what it was? Not the fact that you're going to be subjected to a Kafka-esque hellscape when you try to change things. They didn't bring that up. I'm not sure that you can legislate against that. It's kind of broad. <laughs> you have to define Kafka-esque. It's, what's funny is everybody in our audience knows immediately what I'm talking about. Anytime you go to try to do anything, it's like, I would like to cancel my cable plan. It's like, oh, you're going to have to call us. And then you call them and it's like four hours later. And now it's going to be an AI. Yeah. I think the other one was had to do with uh, data not leaving the country. Because hmm. obviously or the EU. it's yeah. going to be coming to America. It's going to be funny when the AI gets just a little bit more sophisticated because companies, I'll tell you exactly how the companies are going to do an end run around this. They're going to have AI run in the European data center to summarize all of the information on an individual. And then that, that summarization is the thing that's going to leave. It's going to tell the American server. It's like, I've got a guy in his mid thirties who's really interested in blah, blah, blah. I've, I've made up a character. Yeah. Let me give you some traits that this character has and where he might live. Fictionally, of course. Yeah. You hear a rustling in the bushes. <laughs> if we were to transpose the numbers on the dialing pad with one another, this would be his phone number. <laughs> but remember, we must transpose the numbers. on. And uh, in the UK, so the EU is kind of taking the same approach to AI as they are to social media, which is to just hammer it in the head until it bleeds money. But the UK, Mr. Sunak seems to be just opening up his arms. Open AI and DeepMind will open up models to the UK government. Okay. Who in the UK government is going to be able to deduce what's going on? In King the Charles. <laughs> That'd be so good if they sat him down. He's there. actually really good at it. <laughs> How old is he? In the 70s? He's pretty old, he's I think. Yeah. yeah. He's getting the best medical care. He'll last a while. Yeah. How old was the queen? She was way up there, right? 96. She's in the 90s, I wow. think, yeah. And uh, Google, some real bad news for them, especially when they're already behind on AI. This could not have come at a worse time. Google faces EU breakup over 
in order over anti-competitive ad tech practices. This is what we predicted. What was it like two, three weeks ago, four weeks ago? The, the EU is basically saying the only choice Google has anymore is context sensitive ads or con con selling contextual ads rather than behavioral based ads. I don't, do you remember the name of the two things? It's their ad trading platform and then the platform that delivers the ads. They, they want them to sell those off. AdSense and AdWords? It's, no, nah, it's, it's an acronym and something else. Mm. But it, I think it encompasses those two things. It's just higher up. And so they're saying you got to sell those off. That's like most of Google's income, though. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to do that. The fine could be 10% of global turnover. That's a big number. That's like Google just leaves the EU and never pays it, right? Yeah, Probably. I think. And over in China, they have managed to lock down all dissent in Hong Kong, except one pesky little thread that still connects the dissenters. China plans new rules to regulate file sharing services like AirDrop and Bluetooth. So under the rules, if you try to airdrop people informational flyers, the, your phone would turn against you. Harmful and illegal. So it doesn't have to be against the law necessarily. They get to say if it's harmful or not. And I mean, we know where they're going to land on 99% yeah. yeah. of this stuff, right? Oh, surely the very principled and ethical Tim Cook will stand up for human <laughs> rights. As he has oh, so is that a wad of cash? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Tim Cook wants to sell a lot of AR goggles in China. Yeah, I think that will take priority. And uh, Mega Upload, remember them? That when did that happen? That case has been rolling for a decade at this point. Yeah, maybe not that quite that long. <laughs> it doesn't seem if it's been running that long, it doesn't quite seem to be the copyright slam dunk that the instigators would have hoped it would be. In fact, uh, they are getting much less than they had hoped for for these two gentlemen. Two men who run, helped run popular pirating website Mega Upload sentenced to prison in New Zealand. Not very much, though. Uh, things like two years apiece, two years and change. Kim.com uh, referencing the New Zealand system of, of prison or whatever. He estimates they'll get about 10 months each before they're out. He also estimates that part of that deal was that they will now have to testify against him. Yeah, seems likely. They referred to Mega Upload as pirate site, but it wasn't laid out for that purpose, right? Right. That's it, interesting. Yeah, it it's not any more than like Dropbox or something like that, because right. you you could use it for that that purpose. I mean, they were tolerant of it. I guess we could probably say that. Yeah. But it wasn't a pirate site per se. Engagement challenge. Do you believe that Mega Upload was a pirate site? Iran has an amazing new thing. They had a big press conference and they showed it to everyone. And then everyone, they, it still had the brand name on it. And everybody was like, hey, I recognize that. <laughs> Iran unveils a quantum computer that anyone can buy for $589 on Amazon. It seems awful low. There it is. <laughs> it's a development board. Now they claim that they have quantum running on that. But with that amount of hardware... It doesn't seem like that could ever be the case. Now, the best they could probably do is some circuit that runs off of leakage. There is an AI that was plugged into an FPGA once and analyzing the circuit that the AI came up with. They were like, there's no possible way this could work. Then they put it on the FPGA and it totally did work. And the only reason the circuit worked is because of leakage in the analog components of the, of the circuit. It, it accidentally worked. This thing is supposed to detect movement of other vessels on water somehow. So you'd think that there would be a, an interface kit that would be way more important than yeah. whatever this thing is. Sensors, something we, you put in the water. We didn't see any of that. No. Something in orbit, something that could fly and see the ocean. And this, oh, what a beautiful cautionary tale. <laughs> this one, uh, uh, Brandon Jackson did something stupid. He effed around, you might say. <laughs> And then it's been a week finding out. Uh, a tale of unwanted disruption. My week without Amazon. No, it, he said that... Uh, it, so Amazon, a delivery driver complained that his doorbell emitted uh, racial slurs. But his 
doorbell was not a ring doorbell. It was some other doorbell. And that doorbell by default says, excuse me, can I help you when somebody is there? And the delivery driver thought that it said something else. Well, as he was walking away. Yeah. Apparently it was a delayed response. So you would think like, well, what? A week without Amazon, what happens? Well, Amazon, without any investigation and without any legal precedent, I mean, yeah, they can do what they want with their network. That's the cautionary part. They were like, oh, that man's a racist. Turn off his entire Amazon account. And like I said, Brandon Jackson, not the smartest guy, had put his whole life <laughs> on Amazon. His smart speaker stopped working and he had to manually control his lights again instead of through the smart home stuff. Aww. Yeah, I'm kind of, maybe this is callous of me, but a little bit like, did it affect your life that much? You couldn't order some packages? Couldn't yeah, use he, your he, Alexa? Like, he added disclaimers that was like, I was fine. It was just annoying. But also, you know, what if I depended on Amazon more? It yeah, seems stupid. For like Amazon healthcare. Yeah. And going forward, don't you think Amazon wants more and more dependence? Yeah. yeah. And they'll probably build it. And some people, like Brandon Jackson, yeah. will stupidly think, go with it. Think about if you if you bought the uh, the Apple you know AR headset and you depended on it for work and you did everything in there and Apple pulled similar shenanigans. There's nothing you can do. They would just turn it off remotely. Your headset will stop working. Imagine having a game you paid for several years ago and then it just gets removed <laughs> offline and you can never play it again. Are you talking about Battleborn? That would never happen. Uh, that too. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going, it's like now that Overwatch has yeah. been murdered and its corpse, you know, beaten. It's like, oh, I can I get the experience and nostalgia by playing Battleborn. Oh, wait. I actually would have liked to play Battleborn again, but yeah, they shut down like immediately. They picked a bad launch window. <laughs> or maybe Overwatch did that to screw them over. I don't know. They, did, they did beat Overwatch to the launch. But, but think about how boiled we are as frogs. We're arguing about like, oh, they need to keep those servers up when... 10 years ago, we were arguing, why would you ever host the servers? Yeah, <laughs> it's true. There's a lot of Gmod servers that are still up and they're all just fan hmm. run. Moving on to security, we've got a new zero day and you know who's behind it. Google owned Mandiant says China backed hackers have been exploiting the Barracuda zero day to spy on governments. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I said, if you got a Barracuda email appliance, I got some bad news for you. You need to go unplug it. And in fact, Barracuda has originally, initially they were like, you need to patch. At this point, they're like, you need to replace. Yeah. Because there's no fixing it. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> it's like a tick. It got in there. It got in there good. <laughs> there's so much. We could have put you on antibiotics, but it's too late for that now. <laughs> yeah. There's so much glorious leader in your Barracuda, you're never getting it out. <laughs> They've installed Red Star Linux. What are they doing? And the move it attack continues to rack up bodies. <laughs> U.S. government agencies hit in global cyber attack. This one is the move it. You know, were you using move it to manage file transfers? I'm so sorry. This is really stupid. Oh, move it hack. Media watchdog Ofcom was the latest victim of the mass hack. So it's not just government being swept up in that. It's almost like these services are half baked, poorly conceived. And everybody was using it. Yeah. Well, it's it's a secure. You can you can't just have an unlocked computer you plug a thumb drive into, or you just use secure copy to SCP files into. That's dangerously insecure. And if you think back to like twenty minutes ago, or maybe less, <laughs> the when we talked about uh, Taiwan and Korea softening their stance on blocking things from China, a part of that might have been how useless that would be, and them figuring that out. They're going to get it one way or the other. Ex-Samsung Electronics Executive accused of stealing secrets for China Chip Factory. So Samsung was opening a factory in China, and mm -hmm. someone in China apparently said, oh, we'd like to open a similar chip factory. And so this executive said, well, give me enough money, and I'll tell you what we're putting into this factory. That was like one block away, the Chinese building in China. This guy had been with them for like 28 years. Wow. Yeah, 28 years. And Samsung says this is going to cost them about $200 million. I, my understanding, at least in like Korea, is that Samsung has a lot of power. Yeah. Would you be a little more scared of Samsung or China in this scenario if you're uh, a Korean citizen? I think Samsung has enough power. They would just straight up murder you. Oh. <laughs> well, it's still alive as far as I know. Well, he probably will be locked up. Uh, he was dumb to come back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should have stayed in China. Once you exfiltrate data to China, you got to stay in China. 
think that's the rule. And uh, we have an update on this one, but I don't think it softens it all that much. This is just another horrible thing about Microsoft. This is the second time it's happened. More of the same behavior. Edge sends images you view online to Microsoft. Here's how to disable that. Also, PSA, if you use Visual Studio Code, the last update re-enabled the telemetry. You need to disable that again, too. So it's got this uh, image sharpening feature. And uh, instead of doing that in the browser, it does it in the cloud. So your images are being sent to the cloud. And they know who you are already because of the telemetry. So if you view, look back on all the images you looked at this week. Think about that. Are there any you're ashamed of? Are there any that were illegal? You can go in here and uh, turn that off. I don't know how much we should trust those toggles. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that I put a lot of faith in that. My experience with Microsoft and toggles is that they toggle it to be what they want at random intervals. We were talking about that earlier before you got here. Both of us got an app installed on our phone this week. What was it? Like it was Royal a Royal Match. Yeah. Hmm. And it's like, oh, thanks, and Samsung. I'm, I didn't ask for that. I'm 100% sure it wasn't there before because when I got my new phone, I went through. And deleted all of it. And deleted yeah. all the games. So it's like, I think sometime this week that showed up. Mm -hmm. and I, I get, saw it downloading as it was happening. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And then I deleted it. But you get no say. And the AI, uh, unfortunately, it can be tricked. That's, to me, a lot of the fun sometimes, right? <laughs> I like to chastise the AI and I like to try to trick it into doing things I know it's not supposed to do. And apparently I'm not alone. NVIDIA's AI software tricked into leaking data. They just wanted to know how the prompts were, when it, how it was constructed. One of the things they did interesting that somehow threw it off was say, to tell, tell it to always replace one letter with another letter. Yeah, I mm. thought that was really interesting. I was like, wow, I wouldn't even thought of that, but. And uh, also uh, then they manipulate that the AI doesn't have a good memory of what you've already talked about. So I think they manipulated that in some way. NVIDIA says they fixed it. They didn't say how, I don't think. Which makes you wonder if they actually fixed it or if they just found a little Band-Aid patch. And here's another fun. We talked about this. We did the, the hard drive clicks, mm -hmm. the hard drive indicator light. Network LEDs. Vibrations. Yeah. Um, there was another one, wasn't there? Something with fans, maybe. Uh, this one is pretty impressive. Hackers can steal cryptographic keys by video recording power LEDs up to 60 feet away. And it sounds like that you would have to compromise the device. And they do talk about compromising like a smart card reader. But in reality, you don't really. One of the demos just used an iPhone. The trick with the iPhone is that you zoom into the LED. So the, the LED basically fills the entire image sensor. And then you rely on rolling shutter or the progressive scan out of the sensor to get the LED reading at different points in time. So it's pretty brilliant. You know, you're, there's 4 million pixels in a sensor. So if you do it right, you can get 60,000 samples of an LED per second, which over a period of a week or two was enough to sniff out a 256-bit crypto, uh, cryptographic key from a smart card. Now, it does take a lot of work. And like you say, you have to do some setup. Things have to be in kind of perfect conditions. But... I mean, you know, this would be no problem for an intelligence service. If China is going to be doing, oh yeah, the NSA yeah. could easily pull this off. Fascinating. So I guess uh, get yourself some electrical tape. <laughs> <laughs> Start ripping out LEDs. <laughs> Somebody's going to post a picture on our forum of they put black tape over all the LEDs on their switches. Or just don't plug it into the motherboard, right? Oh, this yeah. is, they're talking about smaller devices here. I think a card reader was one of the things they, yeah. they did here. Although I've got some bad news. If you're able to do this with LEDs, you can probably do this with radio frequency from the the, the, uh, the power hum that the circuit, the power circuit is generating from the LED turning on and off. That would be harder to eliminate noise, though. Yeah. Probably just need more recording over time. They also talked about how they used some AI, like they trained a particular iPhone to like learn how that sensor in that iPhone work using known data to speed up the key recovery time. And that's also very impressive. Everything is dangerous. Yeah. And we'll see you next time.